In this video, we're going to draw a picture of an electrochemical cell. It may be referred to as a voltaic cell or a galvanic cell. And most commonly, we just would call this a battery. And it's used to generate electrical energy from a spontaneous oxidation reduction reaction. And the example that we're going to use is zinc. So we'll have a solid piece of zinc in an aqueous zinc plus two solution. And the other electrode will be a solid piece of copper in a copper two solution. So recall this symbol AQ means that metal is dissolved in water. So copper two, this is copper two sulfate, when looks blue. That's the color of it. And a zinc solution would be colorless. And when we draw, what we're going to do is consider the activity series. Zinc is higher on the activity series than copper is, meaning that zinc is more easily oxidized. And when this reaction runs, when we connect the two cells with a wire so that the electrons can actually transfer along the wire, we'll see that the zinc electrode is going to be oxidized, so the electrode will dissolve and go into solution, and the copper electrode will actually get heavier as the copper two, the blue solution, gets reduced to solid copper that electrode will end up gaining mass. So zinc will be oxidized, copper will be reduced. We will also calculate the cell potential, and that will be with the voltage values given on the table of reduction potentials. So we'll see these values come up a little later. Copper plus two getting reduced to solid copper has a positive potential of 0.337 volts. As we noted on the activity series, zinc prefers to be oxidized, so the oxidation reaction will occur backwards. So if I write zinc getting oxidized, that'll go to zinc plus two plus two electrons. And since voltage is a state function, we can just reverse the sign of this value. So when zinc is oxidized to zinc plus two, the half cell potential for that would be a positive 0.763 volts. And if we just proceed to draw the cell, if we consider having two beakers. Each beaker would have a solution of the metal. So our zinc plus two would be in one beaker. Then we would have a solid zinc electrode. So we'd have a solid piece of just zinc in here. And then the next beaker, we would have copper two in solution. So recall copper two gives the nice blue color when that's in solution. So this solution would be blue and then we would have a solid piece of copper submerged in that copper two solution. So the electrodes have no charge. Those are just the elements. And then if we connect these electrodes with a wire. I'm going to draw a box here that would represent a voltmeter. So if we had a voltmeter hooked up to this, we could get a voltage reading. And we are also going to calculate that. And since electrons are going to be transferred from one electrode to the other, in order to keep the charge balanced, if we have a charge buildup, then that would stop the cell. So this is considered the salt bridge. 
So we would have an ionic compound like KNO3, where we have potassium ions and nitrate ions, which are always soluble. We would have the salt in this bridge so that the charges would remain balanced. And from this, we're going to have a spontaneous elect er, oxidation reduction reaction. And we're going to define several terms here. And one of those is the anode. And that is where oxidation occurs. And that's easy to remember if we just look at both of those, our vowels. And the cathode is where reduction occurs. And again, we can remember that because those two letters are both consonants. And looking at the activity series, we know that zinc will preferentially be oxidized. And in this case, that means the copper is going to be reduced. So we would say that that electrode is the anode. The zinc is the anode because zinc will be oxidized. And the copper electrode is the cathode because our copper will end up being reduced. And what's going to happen is these the ions that are in solution, these will gain two electrons and plate onto the solid copper electrode. So as this reaction runs, if it ran to completion, our copper two solution that starts out blue will end up being clear as the copper two gains electrons, gets reduced to solid copper. So our copper electrode is actually going to gain mass. We'll have to use our imagination and assume that we could see individual atoms plating onto the copper electrode. And since zinc preferentially is going to be oxidized, what that means is some of these atoms on the solid zinc are going to come into solution and make more dissolved zinc or more oxidized zinc. So our anode is going to lose mass because the reaction, the anode is the solid zinc, that is going to turn into zinc plus two, plus two electrons. So the electrons would travel along the wire connecting the two electrodes. Our cathode is going to gain mass, and that is because copper plus two is going to gain electrons. That's not why it gains mass, but the reduction when the copper plus two in solution gains electrons, it's going to plate onto the solid copper wire that's already there. And so several things to note as far mm -hmm. as vocabulary. We want to be able to identify the anode. So the anode is the electrode that has the oxidation reaction occurring. And the cathode is the electrode where reduction occurs. And the ions, the direction the ions flow, the ions flow to keep the charge balanced. So anions are going to flow in one direction and cations are going to flow in the other direction. 
And that depends on the direction that the electrons flow. So there's a saying that's kind of easy to remember. Let me finish writing that down. And that is electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. And I find electrochemistry to be confusing because electrons are negative. And so trying to keep track of that can be a little bit difficult. Also, Ben Franklin, he originally guessed that electrons were positive. And so we still incorrectly show uh, current as a positive charge flowing in one direction. So engineers have to worry about that. In chemistry, we're going to call electrons negative because they really are negative. So electrons are going to flow from the anode to the cathode. So the direction that the electrons are going to flow, I didn't leave myself much room here, but the electrons will flow from zinc to copper, from the anode to the cathode. And anode is kind of like the word anion, so that's another way to help us remember that. So electrons are going to be repelled from something negative and drawn toward something positive. So cation, remember, is a positive ion. Zinc, the electrode, is not negative, and copper, the electrode, is not positive, but they're named as though they were. We are also, once we know the direction that the electrons flow, so if the electron, the negative charge flows toward copper, that means the nitrate in the salt bridge is going to flow the other direction. So the nitrate will f move in this direction, and the potassium ions would move in that direction. So the direction of the anions and the salt bridge is not that important. What we do want to calculate is the cell potential or the electromotive force or the voltage or E cell and we're going to do that by looking at these values. So if we remember anytime we cal calculate the cell potential we're always going to take the big number and subtract off the small number. And this is a way, just kind of like a math trick. And it makes, if we want the reaction to make sense, we would use Hess's law. But if we want to get the answer right every time, as long as we think of the number line and take the big number and subtract from it the small number, we'll get the correct answer for the cell potential. So we're going to do that for this electrochemical cell. So if I'm going to calculate the E naught cell, this means our that we're at standard temperature and that our solutions were each one molar. I'm going to calculate the E cell. We're going to use the copper value. So remember this is E. We're going to take each half reaction. And the big number in this case is easy to tell because it's positive. So 0.337 is a bigger number than negative 0.763. So the E naught cell is equal to 0 0.337 volts minus, that's part of the formula. So the minus sign is part of the formula. And the smallest value here is the negative value. So we're going to subtract off a negative 0 0.763 volts. So when we do that, if we, when we subtract a negative, that's the same as adding. So this turns into 1.10 volts. 
So the potential for this cell, that would be the copper and copper two and a zinc and zinc plus two under optimal conditions where there was no resistance and everything worked perfectly, that cell would give us a voltage of 1.1 zero volts.